All right, everyone, let's rock and roll. Let's do this. All right, everyone, welcome. <clears throat> All right, we're going to smash through this webinar. I'm going to teach you guys about trading currency details about all the winning trades I've been taking with the members. I'm going to break it down for you in a lot of detail. So I'm looking forward to um to running through with this you, with you guys now. Let me just notify everyone one more time to make sure everyone gets an opportunity to get involved. And then we're going to rock and roll. Guys, I'll also do a and a at the end as well. If anyone has any questions um, <clears throat> about what I'm teaching you're yeah, more than welcome to, to shoot me a message. All right. So let's just send this message to everyone. Give me one sec, guys. I'm going to send one more link. And we're going to rock and roll. Give me two secs, guys. All right, guys, let's do this. <clears throat> all right, so what I'm going to do in this webinar, guys, I'm going to explain to you all the trades I've been taking with the members, okay? Obviously, I've been sharing with you guys a lot of the winning results and showing you how much the members are making. But most importantly, I think it's important that you guys can understand why the fuck the markets are moving where they're moving. Why is the pound so strong right now, for an example? Why is a dollar going up against a Japanese yen? Like, What actually makes one currency go up in value against another currency? Because once you understand that, it can completely change your outlook on how to make money, okay? And that's obviously what we're trying to do. Make money online, invest for yourself, be financially independent, and not have to go to work and slave away all your day to, to, to earn a wage, okay? That's the power I'm trying to give in this webinar for you guys to just educate you, get you up the curve. And hopefully, if you're not trading, you come on board because I'm literally going to walk you through all of the trades, okay? Since I started this group in early April, these are all the trades I've taken. Taken 20 trades, I won 15, lost five. That's an over 70% success rate, okay? So I'm literally going to walk you through all these currency trades and explain it in detail, all right? So... Number one, what we need to focus on when we're trading currencies is understanding what causes a currency to go up or down in value. And it's as simple as one thing, guys, interest rates and inflation and central banks. These three pillars is what causes a currency to go up or down in value. OK, so you can see recently I took a trade for the pound against the Japanese yen. Uh, we bought the pound against the, the dollar, we won. We bought the Canadian dollar against the Japanese yen, we won. We bought the Aussie dollar against the JPY, we won. Um, we bought the Aussie dollar, um, I guess, the, sorry, pound against the Aussie dollar, we won. I lost one trade against the Aussie dollar. Win, win. Like you can see, all the current, I'm winning basically all the currency trades I'm taking, okay? And it's all down to understanding what the markets are expecting with interest rates, okay? So now I'm going to really explain to you what's been happening in the markets, why is inflation high, what the fuck are central banks doing to deal with it? And how can you make money just by understanding this whole scenario in the global economy? Okay, so everyone knows what happened after COVID, yeah? COVID happened, everyone was in lockdown, then everyone came out of lockdown and governments was printing money, yeah? giving money to everyone. So there was a lot of savings that people had after COVID, then everyone went out and started spending, okay? So the demand for goods and services went up, okay, massively, but the supply of goods couldn't keep up. So what happened? Commodity prices took off, okay? You had oil that went up um, after COVID to the highest level in, I think it was like 15, 20 years, went up to $140 a barrel, okay? Oil hadn't been that high for a very, very long time. The last time oil was that high was in 2008, Okay, so oil went to $140 a barrel. And then we had the war in Ukraine, okay? That just made things even worse, yeah? And the natural gas prices went up. You're all from the UK, you know what's happening with the energy bills. Everyone's energy bills went up, okay? Look at the price of gas, okay? And gas is used for electricity. So gas prices shot up. So energy prices went up, gas prices went up. Then Russia, being fuckery as they are, cut off all the wheat exports coming out of Ukraine, Wheat prices went up. So food prices went up, energy prices went up, oil prices went up, okay? So inflation went out of control. 
Okay, so obviously central banks had to try get inflation down. Now, if you don't know what central banks do, they use interest rates to actually control inflation. Now, if you want to understand a little bit of theory behind interest rates, you can understand the reason you're never taught about money in school is because if you keep the whole population ignorant about money, no one understands it. What does everyone do? Everyone gets into debt. So if everyone's got credit cards, everyone's got loans to buy cars, everyone's got student loans when they went to university to learn some bullshit degree and you don't even get a job from it, which is paying you well. If you have a mortgage, if you keep everyone ignorant and everyone's in debt, when you raise interest rates, you can control everyone's spending. So the central banks are now raising interest rates to control people's spending to bring down inflation, okay? So if I show you how inflation ran away from the central bank's target, okay, which is 2%, Okay, I'll show you the US economy. So this is a spreadsheet that I use when I'm analyzing an economy to generate trade ideas. Might seem a bit complicated, but all we're gonna focus on is the inflation data, okay? You have one inflation called headline, one in co called core inflation. Central banks in the United States has a 2% inflation target. Last year, inflation was at seven, seven and a half, 7.9, 8.5, 8.3. Central banks realized they thought at first, coming out of COVID, it was just a temporary spike in prices and prices would go down. Then they realized prices are not going down. They keep going up. And the United States, the UK, Europe didn't want to be like Turkey with 100% inflation where every year the price of everything doubles. So central banks quickly went to raise interest rates aggressively to wrestle inflation back down to their 2% target. So what happened? I'll show you. <clears throat> and this is really important. You, you focus and you stay on track when I'm explaining this to you. In 2022, March times, this is when the central bank raised interest rates. Okay, look, they were at 0.25%. It was in March 2022, the central bank started to raise interest rates. They raised it by a quarter of a percent, then by half a percent, then by, then by 0.75%. Okay, so everyone who has a mortgage, now their interest payments are going up. Maybe it's £200 a month extra. Some people's mortgages have gone up £3,000 a year. Okay literally right now where we are with central banks. So the central bank went from 0.25% to 5.25%. That's the most aggressive interest rate hiking cycle since the 1980s, right? But look what happened, okay? Now, what you need to understand is when a central bank raises interest rates, there's one thing that happens. Investors love this because they can buy one thing called, can buy a government bond, it's the safest investment you can ever make. You basically borrow money to a government. Let's say I borrowed the US government, 10,000 pounds, right? As an ex example. <clears throat> and in March, 2022, you can see here, which was when? When the US central bank started raising interest rates, March, 2022, okay? Look, interest rates were very low at that time, but look what happened. Interest rates went from, look on the right-hand side, 1.72%. And then look what happened, how aggressively interest rates started to rise. So interest rates in the US start to go up to 2.5%, 3%, okay? All the way up to 4%, okay? So now investors are loving this because they're looking at it and they're saying, fuck me, I can borrow money to the US government, get 4% interest, and I'm guaranteed to get my money back because the US government's never defaulted on their debt. The US is the world's reserve currency. And if, this, and if the government ever gets in trouble, they can just print more money. That's literally what they do, okay? So investors are looking at this and they're saying, lovely, the US is the world's reserve currency. Interest rates are going up. Let's pile our money into US dollars and buy US government bonds, okay? So now you need to figure the situation out. Investors don't care where they put their money. All they want to do is make money, okay? But what they're going to do is they're going to perceive the country with the <laughs> lowest amount of risk that's paying the highest amount of interest. This is the US. So what happened is this, look, who owns the most US debt? Japan is number one. Japan is the number one country that owns the most US debt, 1.1 trillion. China's second, okay? Everyone loves to buy US dollars and buy US dollar debt because US dollar is the world's reserve currency. You're, so you're kind of safe if you buy dollars, right? So look what happened. Everyone was going into dollars, yeah, to buy US dollar um, debt. But what you need to understand about the currency markets is the biggest moves in an exchange rate are going to happen where one country has a much higher interest rate than another country. So when the US central bank went from raising interest rates from 0.25% down, then up to 5%, whoever's messaging me, stop messaging me, I'm trying to teach. From 0.25% down to five, up to 5%, this meant the demand 
for dollars was massive coming out of countries like Japan. And Japan has had low inflation for a very, very long time. Look, this is going back to 2000. This is 23 years. Japan doesn't have an inflation problem. Right now, it's only around um, things like 3%. But look, for a very long time, Japan has had inflation near 0%. They've had spikes once in 2008 once in 2014 but very low inflation that's why japan's interest rate right now is at zero so you think about this you've got an economy like japan which is still the third biggest in the world if you buy a japanese government bond you're getting nothing you're actually losing money if you buy the bond obviously you're not going to borrow money to the japanese government why would you you're making nothing but if you're a japanese investor and you look across the pond and you look at the us and you're saying right i can get four percent interest on that bond if i buy us dollar bonds of course, they're going to buy those bonds. So money came out of Japan and went into dollars. So let me show you the correlation between the two. Now you're going to learn how the bond market drives the currency markets. So this is what we're looking at. So <clears throat> as interest rates in the US went up, so look on the left-hand side, as the interest rates went up from March, look on the right-hand side now. This is the dollar against the Japanese yen. Look how much the dollar went up in value against the Japanese yen. It went up in one year, 32%. Look. As the bond market goes up, the dollar goes up. If at any moment the bond market, so the interest rate on bonds go down a little bit. So look at this period here. The interest rate in the bond went down. What happened? The dollar weakened against the Japanese yen. And then as soon as the bond market took off again, the dollar took off again against the Japanese yen. Okay. Then we had here a little period of a pullback. And what happened? The dollar weakened against the yen. And then the bond market went up again. And then what happened? The dollar rallied against the yen, okay? So you had this massive move. We traded this the whole of last year. We made a stupid amount of money. I was sending these signals to the members all the fucking time, yeah? So you can see how interest rates in the US going up was causing Japanese investors to sell their Japanese yen, buy US dollars, buy um, US um, government bonds, okay? And that's causing a massive move in the currency markets. If I, if I show you this in more detail, we can look at the history of a US 10-year government bond and a Japanese 10-year government bond. Okay, so look, we got the history of the interest rate in the US, history of the interest rate in Japan, going back to 2011. And we look at the difference, okay, which is highlighted in this column, which is literally just minusing Japan's interest rate from the US. And that is the um, blue line, okay? So basically, anything above zero is showing you the US pays a premium interest rate over Japan. And then here in the orange line is the exchange rate. Look at the two. They literally move with each other. And in the last year, the interest rates in the US has been paying a premium rate over Japan of 3.5% right now. At one point, it was 4%. Okay? So that's what caused the dollar to move. All right? Same with the euro against the dollar. Look at the euro last year against the dollar. Same situation. I'm just going to explain to you in more detail. The dollar against the euro last year, the dollar was battering the euro. Why? Because... Last year, the US was raising interest rates at a faster pace. But look how much. The dollar only went up 16% against the euro, but 30% against the yen. Why is that? Only because Europe was also raising interest rates, but not at the same pace as the US. So what I'm trying to explain to you is when you're trading currencies, you have to understand, you have to know where the markets are expecting interest rates to go for certain countries because if you've got one country like Japan right now where markets know interest rates aren't going anywhere because the, the Bank of Japan is telling the markets we don't believe inflation is going to be sustainably high for too long, so we're not raising interest rates. And that is why when all these other central banks, I know you saw on the news the other day, Bank of England raised interest rates, the US central banks raising interest rates, the um, Australian central bank, that's why, look, I'm taking all these trades against the Japanese yen. Win, 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 win. Okay, <clears throat> taking a lot of yen trades. Okay, look, you can see I take a lot of yen trades. I'm just trying to show you why I take a lot of yen trades because it's the easiest money to make. No one is going to take the, the trade in the opposite direction. I will show you why a currency pair will weaken at one point, okay? And that's depending on what happens with inflation, all right? So <clears throat> again, dollar getting stronger against the euro last year, but not as much because the European Central Bank was raising interest rates but just a bit later than the US. They started in um, they started in July. So look what happened. In July, the Bank of Jap um the European Central Bank started raising interest rates. But the key is why did the interest rates in the US peak in October of 2022? The reason being was because 
The US inflation hit a peak in July and by October, it had gone down for three months and the markets knew, okay, inflation's topped out. It's not going higher anymore. So the markets knew that a central bank was probably likely to keep going, but not be as aggressive. And then look what happened with the dollar. Soon as it hit its peak, look at the Euro USD exchange rate. And we made money on the way out. We bought this currency pair. But I'm going to walk through the individual trades with you. I just want to give you a, an understanding of why currencies move first before I walk you through all the different trades. So look, now the bond market started to go down because inflation was going down. And now the dollar started to weaken. Look, the euro got strong. Okay? But notice every time the euro gets strong, okay, it's because the bond market is going down. If the bond market goes up in the dollar's favor, as it had here, for an example, look, the euro starts to weaken again. So the bond market drives everything. But what's driving the bond market? The inflation numbers. Okay, we have to be on top of inflation data. Otherwise, if you're trading technical analysis, I know a lot of you probably join other trading groups and they're sending you charts. If they don't understand this, they're fucking gambling. They are gas men that don't know nothing about trading. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't understand trading. They pretend that they're some, some good traders, but they don't even understand what's really driving markets, right? <clears throat> so let's go look at back at the Japanese yen. USDJPY. So we had that massive move in the dollar against the yen, 30%. <clears throat> and then when did the dollar start to weaken against the yen here? When it hit its peak in October. The bond market started to go down. And then look what happened. The dollar started to weaken. Okay. So now you're understanding the first flow of money is bonds, government bonds. It's the safest place for investors to put their money. So that's a big market. Now, there's another thing that's really important. It's called the overnight carry trade. Okay, so what people, a lot of people don't realize is when you're trading currencies, okay, let's say I'm trading the dollar against the Japanese yen. Let's make this our prime example, all right? So interest rates in Japan, minus is 0.1. So the minus, yeah, you're making, you're getting no money if you buy the Japanese yen. So let me explain it for you guys. Interest rates in the US right now, 5.25%. 5.25%. So it's a thing called the overnight carry trade. So the interest rate set by the central bank in both countries means that if I own, if I have a trading account and I'm trading the dollar against the Japanese yen, yeah, for me to buy the dollar against the yen in this exchange rate, I have to first, it's, all, it's done automatically by the broker. But when I press buy, if I'm buying the currency pair, I want to buy the dollar against the yen. But the, what the broker is doing is, it's actually first buying Japanese yen, selling those Japanese yen and buying US dollars, okay? So you have to first own the yen, sell it and buy dollars to trade an exchange rate because you're obviously trading two currency pairs, okay? Um, you're trading two currencies, sorry. So what that means is if I borrow the yen to buy the dollar, I pay no interest on the yen that I borrow. Look, it's at minus 0 0.1. You don't pay anything, but I get paid 5.25%. So if you add that together, that means if I go long the currency pair, which basically means I'm investing in the dollar against the yen, I can make 5.35% interest free credited into my account by the broker, depending on the size of my trade. So if you've got some hedge funds taking big boy trades, well, now they could be making up to $15,000 free money credited into their account when they're taking big positions. Remember, you've got big hedge funds with billions of dollars. Imagine making twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a day going into your trading account from the broker, even if the exchange rate doesn't move an inch. So imagine everyone's trying to catch that overnight carry getting credited into their account and think about it. Who in their right mind is going to sell the dollar and buy the yen and be losing that amount of money every day? No one's going to do that. That is why this currency has moved 30%. So imagine you're making 5% interest and then you're catching a 35% move. You're making big money. That's like 40% if you if you caught the whole trade as a prime example, right? <laughs> so that's called the overnight carry trade, which is why I'm showing you <clears throat> investors will rather buy the dollar or the pound against the yen than buy the pound, for an example, against the US dollar. Because... Let's look at a prime, prime example. UK interest rates right now are 5% and US interest rates are 5%, right? So as a prime example, just to show you, 
if interest rates in the US are 5.25% and interest rates in the UK are 5.25%, then what's the difference you're making? Minute. There's not really a difference. So investors are not really going to look at that trade and say, uh, yeah, I'll trade the pound against the dollar. No, they're going to say, no, let me trade the pound against the yen. I'll get a bigger, I'll get a bigger free credit of money coming into my account from the broker. All right. Or if you're a big hedge fund, you're trading with an investment bank or whatever, but it's the same process, which is why for the previous trade I sent to the members, we won this trade against the yen. Okay. So why did I take this trade against the yen? Because in the UK, so now you understand the fundamentals. Now I'll walk you through the trades. In the UK, let me close this spreadsheet. I don't need this one open no more. In the UK, early this week, inflation data came out and it wasn't and it wasn't good. Okay. Inflation data in the UK is very worrying. It's, getting, it's going higher. It's actually not falling. So now policymakers, when I say policymakers, I mean the central banks, they're panicking because they're thinking, fuck, what are we going to do? We have to keep raising interest rates. Okay. Because look, investing.com, let's have a look at this week. What happened? All right, let's go back. So I'm explaining to you the trades, right? So earlier this week, UK inflation data came out, okay? So the central banks raised interest rates in the UK aggressively, trying to get inflation down. So they're looking at the inflation numbers every month, and they're hoping that inflation is coming down. But it's not happening. Core inflation, which strips out food and energy, which is the one they're looking at, it went from 6.8% up to 7.1%. Bank of England thinking, fuck, that's a problem, right? So I said to the members straight away, as soon as I saw those numbers, easy money. Literally, I knew that's the easiest money you can make straight away. Why? Because let's have a look. Here's the history of interest rate differentials between the UK and Japan. Look how perfectly correlated this is. When interest rates are going up in the UK above Japan, look at the exchange rate. You get big moves in the exchange rate. When, the, when it narrows and it's no longer as profitable, you can see the interest differential goes down, the pound goes down. If it goes back up in the pound's favor, the exchange rate goes up. So look, the exchange rate is the orange line, the difference is the blue line, okay? And you can see the difference is anything above one. So look what happened. In March 2020, the interest rate differential between the UK and Japan started to really take off right here and look at the exchange rate boom the pound's been going off against the japanese yen okay so now let's show you the exchange rate let's show you how the pound's been going up sorry guys one sec there we go look at the moves in the pound recently and look at the long-term trend in the pound against the yen it's been going up from the whole of two since 2020 so you've got this big move and this current pair is going to keep moving, okay? So we made a nice profit this week off this trade. It was easy money, okay? The data came out, right? The data came out, and then straight away, boom, we bought the currency pair, made a nice little profit, okay? All the members made really good money, okay? And then, obviously, I said to the members, look, send me some screenshots, and look, you can see here, where's the trade I sent to the members? Da -da 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 -da. Here we go. Members are buying the pound against the Japanese yen, okay? Then I said to the members, <clears throat> uh, "I've members, I've closed my trades. Send me a screenshot of your trades. Okay, look, you can see it here. Then the members came over and sent me all their screenshots, okay? And this is what I'm showing you, all right? So all these screenshots I'm showing you, look at this member, 638 pound profit, okay? This member, you can see, making profits, okay? Like, this guy made 2,000 pounds, look. Literally traded the pound against the yen. He made 2,000 pounds, just followed what I did. I just said, buy the pound, bought the pound, 2,000 pounds, okay? One of them is, this guy made 940 pound profit. This guy made 1,120 pound profit. Okay, look, you can see the trades here. All right, so look, members are killing it, making easy money. She made 540 pound profit, okay? So look, you can see these are all the real screenshots. My guy made 1,093 pound profit. All right. This one made 1,700 pounds. So look, all the results there, and these are real results. You can see, say to the members, I'm buying the pound against the yen. You understand why, okay? <clears throat> Interest rates, okay? Now I want to show you how, all right, so firstly, we, we know what central banks are looking at. Right now, they're looking at inflation data. They need to know what's going on with inflation. 
and they're raising interest rates based on that inflation data. They are looking at some other indicators, but I can't really go into much detail about that because it's too complicated for me to explain. But they're also looking at the jobs market because jobs data really drives inflation. In the UK, there's a shortage of workers because of Brexit and um, the pandemic. So there's not a lot of people that are looking for work compared to how many vacancies there are. So businesses are panicking because they can't get enough people. So they're basically raising wages and trying to get people to, to, to come into their work. But when they're raising wages, then they up, they're raising prices to offset that cost. So it's called an inflationary spiral. And the UK is in that situation. So the UK, the US, they're trying to raise interest rates. And unfortunately, they're trying to force people to lose their jobs on purpose because let's say people just can't spend money anymore because their mortgages, credit cards, car loans, student debt payments are going up. They stop spending money. Business stop making revenue. They're having all these workers they're paying salaries to. Business is going to be like, fuck that. Get out of here. You're sacked. People lose their job. And then they can lower prices because they're not having to pay as much wages. So this is the situation. So they're really looking at two main indicators, the jobs data and the inflation numbers. All right. So in the UK, the data came out this week. It was not good. OK, we saw inflation go up. So now we need to once we get the data that comes out, what we need to look at is, OK, what do the markets expect for interest rates? And this is where we have this spreadsheet that I follow and I update every day so I can see where the market's expecting interest rates to go, yeah? So here, look, the UK interest rates at 5.19%. They're expecting interest rates to go up in the UK to 6%. It hasn't been 6%, I think, since, was it 2000 or the early 90s? I can't even remember. Basically, UK interest rates ain't been that high for a very long time, yeah? So let's have a look. Interest rates, UK, 5%. Let's go back to the last 25 years. Last time it was that high was 2008. 2008 that was what's that 14 years ago it's a long time ago okay so think about it actually think about what i'm going to say to you if interest rates go in the uk to six percent man what i showed you guys about the carry trade if you're an investor what you're going to do how are you gonna make some easy money you're going to think to yourself hold on let me just buy the pound against the yen and let me just take that 6% interest coming into my account. Who in the right mind is going to sell the pound and buy the yen and you're going to lose 6%? No one's going to do that, really. Of course, the exchange rate will fluctuate. It's not going to be, a, it's not going to go up in a straight line. But if people are all catching that overnight carry into their training account and everyone's buying, what's going to happen? You're likely to get a big move higher in the exchange rate. Okay. And if you look at the currency pair, the next major resistance level this is a technical analysis term that we have to look at this is where we can bring in technicals have you noticed guys i haven't paid any attention to technicals that's the last thing i'm looking at i don't care about technicals fundamentals first next level's up here so we can buy with an upside target we'll buy the currency pair and we'll have an upside target a nice seven percent move what i'm looking at that's what i want to buy yeah that explains this trade that i took with the members. So look, you can see fucking killing it. My members have made some serious money from the trades that I'm sending to them. Remember, 90% of these members never traded before. They're just copying and pasting what I'm doing. All right. Uh, we, we did the end, did the end. I did buy the pounding as a dollar as well, which was a winning trade, which I sent to the members. Um, let's go back to that trade. Where was it? Da -da 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 -da. Where was that trade? Here we go. Said to the members, I'm buying the pound against the US dollar. Okay. And that was on, what date was that? That was on the 15th of June. So I bought the pound against the dollar. It was around here on this day. And we caught that nice move here. We got, we caught that move here. Okay. Reason being was because it was before the US Central Bank actually spoke about raising interest rates even more. And the markets were expecting that the UK was going to keep raising rates while the US Central Bank hadn't signaled that further rate hikes were coming. So all you need to think about, guys, is you just want to compare two currencies where one central bank's raising rates and another central bank isn't raising rates. That's where you're going to get your moves. OK, I am only now going to focus on trading the yen pairs they're the easiest ones to trade okay because right now if i walk you through what markets are expecting they're expecting the euro central bank <laughs> the european central bank to raise interest rates by half a percent 
The US to raise interest rates by half a percent. The UK to go up by 1%. So we're likely to get the biggest moves in the pound, okay? Canadian Central Bank going to raise interest rates by a quarter of a percent. Australian Central Bank, half a percent, okay? And the rest of these currencies, no rate hikes. And these currencies, rate cuts. So basically, we want to match up. We want to buy the, the euro, the Aussie dollar, um, the Canadian dollar, and the pound. We want to buy them against these currencies. So all these other currencies here, basically. Sorry, I think the Swiss made a mistake here. I think the Swiss Central Bank is going to raise interest rates. Let me just go down. 1.69%. Yeah, there's going to be another rate hike by the Swiss Central Bank. So we're definitely not buying against the Swiss Central Bank. That doesn't make any sense. That's a risky trade. So we ain't taking that trade. Rate hikes. So guys, you see how like, if you're trading currencies, you really got to be on top of this. You got to know where central banks are raising interest rates. You got you got to be on top of this. Otherwise, you ain't trading. You're gambling. Okay. Anyway, let's walk through some other trades that I took. Um, we did okay pound against the New Zealand. We did euro, New Zealand dollar, which was which was at that time on a big move higher. But now the New Zealand Central Bank surprised the markets with interest rate hikes, so I'm not really focused on that. Okay, let me just show you some other ones that did make sense where I can explain the interest rate differentials. Euro, New Zealand dollar. Look at this one. Sorry, Euro, yen. So you can see we traded Euro, yen here. Okay, we made some good profit there. We also traded the Aussie dollar against the Japanese yen. And these trades, same situation. Let's have a look at what's happening in Europe. So we're going to look at the European economy and we can understand exactly why the European Central Bank is raising rates, okay? So we go to Europe, we look at the inflation data, we track it and we see inflation since January isn't coming down. It started at 5.2, it's now 5.3. So it hasn't moved in six months. And the European Central Bank has aggressively raised interest rates as I showed you over here, okay? So the European Central Bank's raising rates, they've gone from zero to 4%. And core inflation hasn't budged. That's why the European Central Bank is saying to the markets, we have to keep going. We have to keep raising interest rates. we got to get inflation down because there's a thing called inflation expectations. If you as a consumer expect inflation to stay high for long, you're going to demand higher pay from your work, from your employer. And what's your employer going to do? Raise wages. What's the employer going to do after he raises wages? Raise prices. What, what can happen? an inflationary spiral. And the central banks are scared of an inflationary spiral. They don't want it because that could cause big problems. Imagine one day your shopping is 100 pounds and then next week, sorry, not next week, let's say in three, four months, it's now 120 pounds. How are you going to budget your your month to month expenses? How can you budget to buy a car? It can fuck up businesses all over the country. So you need inflation to be going up at a steady pace. That's why this is very important for central banks, right? So if you look at the European Central Bank, Markets are betting European Central Bank interest rates going to go from 3.35% to 3.85%. That's a half a percent rate hike coming. Two more rate hikes of a quarter of a percent. So that's why the euro is taking off against the yen. Again, why? Well, you, <coughs> well, you know why. You're making free money. Take this fucking trade and make free money off the trade. Euro JPY is an easy trade right now. Sorry, one second. What's European interest rates? 4.25%. Not as much as the US, not as much as the pound, but still you're making money. You're getting 4% interest. And then, <laughs> and then you're, making a, you're getting a move in the currency pair. So basically what I'm trying to show you guys is all you have to do, what I'm doing right now to catch the most easiest trades is you just have to wait for the data to come out, really. You just have to be very patient. You don't need to go and um, trade six trades a day and send bullshit signals, as I'm sure a lot of you joined other trading groups. And the reason you're losing all your money is because the guys that you're trading with, they don't know what they're doing. They're just looking at charts and trying to buy and sell with no understanding when you could just sit back. Look, I've been training. I've had this trading group for nearly two months. I've only sent 20 trades. Some trading groups will send you 20 trades in like five days and then you lose all your money. Why? Because there's no under, there's no basis behind what they're doing. So all you got to do is to be to, to be consistently profitable is you just got to know when to trade. Some days I'm not trading. If I don't see a good trading opportunity in a week, I ain't trading. I'm not gambling. I'm not trying to lose all my money. That's why all these members are cashing in. <laughs> okay. And if I go down and I show you, look, I can literally scroll down in this chat from older screenshots. Um, look, profits for the pound, okay? 
This guy made 250 for the pound trades against the, against the US dollar. This guy made five, 576, 800, <clears throat> okay? This guy made 200, 60 pounds. Look, they're making profits. This guy's 600 pounds. One of the members, Edward, he made, what did he make? Five grand in one day. Hey, look, look at this member. And he made me a video because I asked him, I was like, bro, you're killing it. Hold on, let me show you. Oh, wow, I missed his messages. He actually made 30,000 pounds in a week. Fuck. I didn't even realize what he said to me. But there you go, look, here's all his profits. Okay, no, he smashed it. Look, profit, 30 grand. There you go, guys. Look, proofs in the pudding, man. <laughs> man, I'm making 30 grand. I don't know what he's trying. I don't know what account he's making, but this is the last screenshot. I remember him sending me. Look, he made five thousand pounds in one day, guys. Five grand. <coughs> I'll show you my results. I did twenty thousand pound profit for myself in the last like two two and a half weeks. So look, trading's not, guys. What you got to think to yourself is this year. Why go to work? Yeah, honestly, I really logically think about it. Why are you going to go to work and spend eight hours a day for someone to pay you eight, 10 pounds an hour to help them sell something, to make them rich? And then you get paid and then you go and you blow your money. You go buy clothes or you go get drunk or you go get pizza takeaway. Guys, come slap three, 400 pounds in your training account and fucking make this much profit. That's what you should be doing. That's, a, that's what I would be doing if I was seeing the results of all these members. Because look, these are all screenshots. I can't lie to you and pretend these, people, these members are making it. They're making it. 800 pounds in a day. Look, boom. All right. So, yeah, guys, look, powerful. It's fucking powerful. Now, to join my training team, okay, all you have to do, you don't give me any money. I want to make sure you understand, okay? You don't give me any money. You set up your own training account with your own name. It's all yours. You don't give me login details, nothing. You come into these channels, I send my trades, you literally copy and paste what I'm doing. Then I send you a lot of education. So look, I'm breaking down why I'm looking at selling the stock market. So I'll send you screenshots, I'll write an explanation. I'll send you articles if you want to read and be able to, <clears throat> to learn alongside me, okay? I'll send you videos on interest rates. Like I just did this webinar, I was explaining it in a bit more detail. I'll break down what's happening with the Bank of England. So you're going to be learning as you're earning, okay? I'll do. I'll give you short videos explain, <clears throat> explaining the markets. So I got this fucked up cough. I'll be saying to you, look, why is the euro going up? I'll break it down for you. I'll explain. <clears throat> I'll explain it in detail. You're never going to find a training group like this. I'll tell you right now. You're going to find some other training groups. I just send you loads of bullshit signals. You lose all your money. They're not going to explain it. So every trade I'm taking, look, I'm explaining. Members, my next trade will be Euro JPY. I'm waiting till tomorrow after the Bank of Japan interest rate decisions tonight before I buy. The euro is strong against the yen as the European Central Bank today signaled more rate hike increases are likely in the coming months. So you know what's going to happen. Interest rate differentials, as I explained. Japan Central Bank remains the only major central bank to keep interest rates at minus 0.1%. Investors favor buying higher interest rate paying currencies against the yen as it's the most profitable. There you go. So you're going to learn. You're not, I'm not going to send you trades. You're not going to learn. You're going to fucking learn. And then I'm going to send you a whole breakdown of the week ahead saying, so you know all the key events, right? And I'll do a video. Look, I broke down why I was, this is before I even bought this currency pair. I was explaining um, why I was going to buy the pound against the, against the dollar. So I'll do a whole video. Which is like a really good trade, okay? Because at the moment, markets are really expecting the Bank of England to have to raise interest rates. And then we bought the currency pair and then we made money. So you're learning as you're earning. All you need, guys, okay, just so you, if you're thinking about coming on board, and the reason I want to show you this is because I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, is this a scam? Like, I understand. There's a lot of scammers out there. I can't lie to you. So for all the people that have been a bit on the, on the, on the fence about it, I, I completely understand. But now you can see, look, all the members are getting all this education. All the members are getting all these trades. Then we have a channel here. Look, I give you videos on how to manage your risk. This video, will, if you follow this, you'll, you won't blow your account. You won't lose all your money if you follow it. They basically teach you how to like calculate, <laughs> calculate how much to put on a trade so you don't lose all your money. Okay, if you follow it, you make money. If you don't follow it, you take high risks. You take the risk of losing it's up to you, okay? Okay, we've got videos explaining how to open and close trades, even if you've never done it. 
how to withdraw your money from the broker, <laughs> broker, the type of orders we take. So there's a lot of education in there as well. So by the time you join, at least you don't feel like, raw. what the fuck am I doing? I've never done this before. It's all there for you guys, okay? All you need, just to make you aware, you set up your own training account, okay? So if you're interested, what I want you to do, I'm going to drop the link now in the channel, all right, on the free channels. I want you to message Kyan's Markets Bot. Send my team a message now and you can get started, okay, and join my trading team. That's the link, all right? I really hope this webinar has helped you guys just open your fucking mind to invest in, okay? But the key I was trying to tell you is that even if you don't trade with me, okay, which is absolutely fine, make sure that if you ever join someone's trading team, if they're not educating you, if they can't explain why they're taking a trade, you fucking know that person's chatting shit. He don't know what the fuck he's doing. That is the point I'm trying to do with this webinar is to make sure that you guys are more witty about who you give your money. Not you give your money to because you're not giving money to anyone, but who you trust to help you make money, okay? Now, if you guys want to learn about trading, I've got online courses on my website. You can come to my website. You've got detailed video description. You get all the spreadsheets for yourself. You get mentoring from me so I can teach you how I learned all this myself. So if you want to be a long-time investor for yourself, if you want to make the type of profits that these members are making for the rest of your life without having to rely on me or anyone else, you can fish for yourself and get in contact. Go to kindsmarkets.com and have a look at the prices of the courses and get in contact, okay? <clears throat> but guys, look, <clears throat> I'm going to do a quick Q&A. A quick Q&A. &A. Please ask me any questions before we, before we go so I can... Um, <clears throat> Ask me any questions, guys, please. Yeah, also, guys, you get a 30-day free trial. You don't pay anything for 30 days. After 30 days, you pay £65 a month. What the fuck is £65 a month? Some members making making £1,000 in a day, okay? But you get a 30-day free trial. You don't pay me anything. You come on board. You can try it. If you like it, you stay. If you don't like it, you don't continue. Happy days. It's not a problem. All right, so, yeah, you get a 30-day free trial. <clears throat> where did I learn all this? Listen, I started trading like 10 years ago. So I've read so many books. I read Bloomberg every day. I've taken online courses. It's been a fucking, it's been a painful journey, man. Trust me, but it's worth it. Cause you know, I, I got a good life. So, and I love my job as well. So will you be training against the yen this week? Probably. Yes. I'm looking at Euro JPY, pound JPY, dollar JPY. Look, these current spares are really moving against the yen, as you can clearly see. I'm probably mainly looking at the pound JPY, if I'm honest with you. That's probably looking like the one will make the most money. Dollars going up against the yen as well. USD CAD, like someone just said, what about USD CAD? <clears throat> Honestly, there is no point matching up a currency like the dollar against the CAD. Canada's interest rate is 4.75%. There's no major difference between the two, so you're not going to get big moves. All you want to do is compare currencies with big differentials in interest rates. That's why I was showing you as this example in this video, trading against the yen, you're going to get big moves. All right. So yeah, when you trade, you, you download an app on your phone. It's called MT4. You literally just trade through the app. It's super easy. You connect the account with the broker to the app and you're good to rock and roll. Simple as that. What website do I use to find inflation data? Investing.com. Go to investing.com forward slash economic calendar. This one here. That's what all the data is. You can check, like you can say for like this week and it'll give you all the information for the week that comes up. Okay. <clears throat> also, one thing to note, when you trade with me, the broker is going to double your account balance, which is very important. So you just say you put in 300 pounds, you're going to have 600 pounds to trade with. Okay. This is really fucking important. It helps you with your risk management. The bigger your account, when you're putting on a trade, the less risk you're taking. Okay. So that's really important. So you literally get to double your money before you even trade. You can't withdraw the money that the broker gives you. But it's just a credit, but it helps you have a bigger balance and it helps you control your risk. 
how long did it take you to grow and learn this? It's been 10 years for me. But with these courses now, you could learn in five months, six months, three months. It depends how hard you study. But luckily, you'd have someone like me with all this experience teaching you. I wish I had that. I didn't have that. I just had to learn the hard way. Where did you find the data which you was looking at? <laughs> how many hours a week will I have to dedicate for the one-on-one -on -one course? At your own pace. You literally learn at your own pace. There's, you don't have to dedicate you can just take as long as you want. The course is yours for life. You buy it once and it's yours. So you learn at your own pace. I would say just fucking put your head down and work as hard as you can to learn. My biggest loss, I lost 20,000 pounds on the trade before. Yeah, I lost 20 grand. So trust me, I've had some fucking big losses in the past. I've never happened to me now because I've learned. I learned risk management. I learned not to gamble. I learned not to be too aggressive. Trial and error, man. But I've made good money as well. So it's just, you know. It what books you recommend reading? I don't recommend reading any trading books. Buy this fucking course because it has everything you need. You're going to be learning how to basically come on these spreadsheets. <clears throat> you're going to learn how to come on these spreadsheets. And you're going to learn, for an example, how to come and look at the United States as a country and you're going to learn how to say, okay, inflation is expected to go to this level in the next two years. Consumers are expecting inflation to go over here. Inflation is currently here. The markets are there, bet, therefore betting that interest rates are going to go here by this date. All right, cool. What's these major economic indicators over here telling us about the economy? Okay, the economy is slowing down. So maybe inflation will come down. So maybe interest rates won't go up that much. Do you see what I'm saying? So like you're using all this data, but all this is built into a system. So you're not just looking at random pieces of information. You're in the, in the video course, I literally break it down video by video. This is how it all links together so you can understand it. It might seem like a lot of information, but once you know it, you know it and you make sense. So it's not, it's not complicated for you. Do you see what I'm saying? All right, guys, look, I got to love you, leave you, man. <clears throat> it's my cheat day and I need to get a pizza. So I'm not going to lie, I'm going to order some food. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Click the link now because demand's massive. All right. So you need to get involved. Don't miss out on a 30-day trial. <clears throat> Let's, <clears throat> Let's go, guys. Peace.